Hello, I'm meteorologist Adam Epstein, and thank you for joining me for the first installment of Weather Club Wednesday. Today, we're going to be going over thunderstorms. You're going to become lightning and thunder professionals. Let's start out asking a question. Why is weather important? And this is a broad question. It has tons of answers, and it could be why is weather important to you? Why do you consider the weather when you wake up every day? It could be from what you wear to what you're going to do outside, and a big problem with weather is safety. That's why a lot of us study the weather and a lot of us pay attention. Whether it's going outside for recess or if it's playing sports outdoors, professional organizations like the MLB or NFL have meteorologists just like me on their staff to make sure they know if they could play outside or not. You don't want to get caught in a thunderstorm, something like this right here. And the announcers were talking about, I'm surprised the umpires haven't called this yet. Well, me too. But Pedro actually just told me that Usually, they wait until the batter is done with the at-bat, and then they postpone the game. And I'm pretty sure that's what happened here when the Giants were playing. Looked a little scared for that one. So when you go outside and there's a thunderstorm, it's always safe to go indoors. And we're going to talk about why in a moment. So what is meteorology? Check out the screen right here. Look closely. And tell me what you see. What was that? Well, if you're thinking shooting star, you're correct. And the scientific term for a shooting star is a meteor. But that's not meteorology, even though it sounds like it. Meteorology is the science of weather and climate. And you probably haven't heard about him yet, but in middle school science class, or history class, I should say, you'll learn about someone called Aristotle. Brilliant man, Greek philosopher, thought of a lot of new things. One of the things he studied was space, stars, planets. And then he started studying something a little bit closer to the Earth and things that fall from the sky, like rain, like snow, hail, ice. And the Greek word for things that fall from the sky is meteoron. And when you add the suffix ology to the end of the word, that means the study of. So meteorology is the study of things that fall from the sky. And it's evolved. A meteor is an object from space that burns in the atmosphere. This right here, this is a meteor. Another fun fact about this, this is probably the size of a grain of sand as it burns up in the sky and it looks like it never even makes contact with the ground. And this is what I study. This is meteorology on a synoptic or countrywide scale. Where are the storms? Which way is the wind blowing? Where's high pressure? Where's low pressure? And I'm trying to predict the future. And that's not always easy. But that is what I study as a meteorologist. We're going to go over thunderstorms today, and this is a real picture in South Dakota. What you're seeing here is a supercell. This is a thunderstorm that grows to be almost its own entity, its own thing, and it starts to rotate a little bit. The flash that you're seeing up here, that light, that's lightning within the storm. And everything below my hand right here, that's rain from a distance. And this is lightning striking a TV tower. It's hard to spot the tower, but look right here. And there are two reasons that lightning is striking this tower. Take a moment to think about what they could be. Lightning usually hits tall things, right? So like trees, towers, and also this tower, what is it made of? What do you think? It's metal. Metal is a conductor of electricity. So those are the two reasons lightning would be striking this tower. Let's talk about why lightning strikes tall things. Well, this is lightning in super duper slow motion, 7,200 frames per second. So you have this excess buildup of energy in a cloud and it needs somewhere to go. Think about you sitting in class for two hours at a time. You want to stand up, you want to do something. So this energy leaves the cloud and little step leaders come out searching left, right, up, down, any direction for something to touch, something to put their energy into until finally one of the step leaders finds something and all of a sudden we have our lightning. So everything you see before that flash, the step leaders, this is invisible to the naked eye. We cannot see this unless we slow it down with super high speed cameras. And when you see this one flash, pulse or glow, that's called a return stroke. And that's what it looks like to see lightning flicker in slow motion. And that's an exchange of energy from the ground back up to the cloud. So it goes both ways. And lightning doesn't always go to the ground. In fact, more often than not, it goes from cloud to cloud. And this is called cloud to cloud lightning. So it stretches across the sky. And you've probably seen that in your lifetime before too. So when it comes to lightning, it's electricity. And I wonder if you've ever made your own electricity. And I think you have. You might not realize it though. Have you ever rubbed your socks against a rug or maybe a balloon on your hair and your hair starts to stand up? You're separating charges right there, something called ions, positive and negative charges. And the same thing you're doing when you rub a balloon on your hair happens in a cloud, but it's with ice particles. They rub against each other. The heavier ones sink to the bottom and take a negative charge. 
the lighter ones float to the top and they take a positive charge and you create this electric field. And when that field gets strong enough, you have a discharge or you let go of that energy and you have lightning. And one thing you need to know about lightning is that it is hot. Lightning is very, very hot. This is poor circuitry in a house. It shouldn't happen to you. The house is a safe place to be. But this is an example of what lightning can do. So the freezing point of water is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. This means, let's say it rains today. Then tonight, it gets really cold, drops down to 32. Tomorrow morning when you wake up, you go to school, go to the playground, the blacktop has those puddles frozen over. Lightning's hotter than this, right? Yes. The boiling point of water is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's say you or your parents want to make some pasta. Well, you fill up the pot with water, you put it on the stove, it starts to bubble and boil. Can you touch that? No, you'll burn yourself. That's pretty hot. But lightning, it's hotter than this. The average temperature of the surface of the sun is 10,340 degrees Fahrenheit. So picture this, all the way out in space, right? There's this flaming ball of gas on fire, and it sends its heat millions and millions and millions of miles to make it here, to planet Earth, to make this planet habitable. Without it, we wouldn't survive. And that's about 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Do you think lightning could be hotter than this? Well, guess what? It is, and not only is it hotter, it's about five times hotter than the surface of the sun at 53,540 degrees Fahrenheit, approximately, about. That's an estimation. So this is why lightning is so dangerous and why there's a thunderstorm and you're playing baseball, you cancel that game, you postpone that game, you play it later and you go inside. So when someone like me is on TV saying, Hey, we have a thunderstorm rolling through Central California, moving in the Central Valley. A lot of lightning activity near Sacramento. Please stay inside. Hopefully, you will stay indoors. And this is what happens when lightning strikes an object. Did you see that? Don't worry if you missed it. I'll play it again in slow motion for you. Lightning striking this telephone pole right here. And it just explodes. Look, I don't want this to be you. I want you to stay safe. So please, when you hear thunder roar, you go indoors. That's an easy way to remember it. That is a scary situation right there. Let's keep going. You guys know what Sprite is, right? Soda? No, we're not talking about soda. This is something called Sprite lightning. And this happens above a cloud, when sometimes lightning shoots up towards space. And because of the different chemicals in the atmosphere, the lightning turns red. Yeah, it's pretty strange, but it's an amazing thing that astronauts have seen, people in airplanes have seen, and if you're in a plane state, meaning it's very flat, and you can see on the horizon for miles, you might see this above a thunderstorm one day. That's the lightning we've been talking about below the storm. And this is another example of sprites over the English Channel. They can be vibrant and red and light up the sky. There's also something called ball lightning. Watch closely right around here. Keep your eye on this area. Did you see it? It'll play again, but there's a little ball that comes falling out of the cloud. There have been numerous instances where people have reported this, picked up the phone, called 911, said, hello, I'd like to report a UFO. I just saw aliens, but it's not aliens. Scientists have determined that this is in fact lightning, but why it falls out of a cloud in a ball like this, we don't know. So maybe one of you who wants to be a scientist can grow up, go to college, do your studies and research and find out why something like ball lightning happens. So you guys know everything there is to know about lightning now. It's the light, it is what you see. Thunder is the sound. That's what you hear. So it's a one-way street. You can only see lightning and hear thunder. You can't see thunder or hear lightning. You follow me? I think you got it. So the speed of light is very fast. In fact, it's the fastest thing we know of in the universe, 300 million meters per second. This is a difficult number for scientists to grasp, a difficult number for adults to grasp. But I'm going to have my friend Pedro Rivera help me out and help you understand how fast lightning is. So Pedro, join me over here. My friend, we're going to start you. This is Pedro Hi, on dude. this side of the screen. Perfect. I'm going to stand over here okay. all the way across the screen. Gotcha. Pedro. I'm gonna give you one second to get as close to me as you can. Ready, go, stop. Wow. That's pretty good. I tried, That's man. pretty good. So Pedro went from here to right over here. You guys catch that? We'll do it one more time. Went from here to here. Great job, Pedro. Give yourself a round. You can sit down now. So Pedro went a distance pretty fast of about two meters. That's six feet. 
So he went two meters in one second. That's how fast Pedro Rivera can run. Well, light can run 300 million meters in that one second. That's how fast light is. And the speed of sound is pretty fast too, but it doesn't look like anything compared to the speed of light, 340 meters per second. It's still too fast for Pedro. He'll never beat sound either. So what this means is the light that's bouncing off the lights coming out of your ceiling or your lamps or the sun reflecting off my face and going to your eyes is moving much faster than the sound coming out of my mouth and going to your ears. Think of fireworks. You see that flash of light in the sky and then a few moments later you hear the explosion. The same thing happens with lightning. It's because the light's traveling faster than the sound. But if you're very close, if you're in a classroom, it all happens simultaneously because the distance isn't that far away. You need that distance to notice the difference between seeing something and hearing something. And mathematically, the way it works out is something called the five second rule. I'm not talking about eating dirty food off the ground, okay? The five second rule means if you see lightning and you start counting, one, two, three, four, five, and then you hear thunder, that means that lightning strike is one mile away from you. So if you count it to 10, how many miles away would that be? If you count it to 15, how many miles away would that be? Three. Three. Pedro Rivera got it. Good job. So the best question I've ever gotten from a student was a kindergartner. She said, Adam, if lightning is just light, why does it make such a loud sound when it hits the ground? Because when I turn my classroom lights on and that hits the ground, that doesn't make a loud sound. So why does lightning do that? Well, remember what I told you about lightning? We went through a list of temperatures. Lightning is very hot. It does this bizarre thing. All the air that you're breathing right now, the air that your hands feel when you wave them in front of you, go ahead, you can wave them. You feel something, right? It's not nothing. There are things there. We cannot see them, but they're microscopic molecules. And there are things there. So when the lightning leaves the cloud, it is so hot. It touches those air molecules, and it rips them apart to the point where it explodes the air around it. So thunder kind of sounds like an explosion because that's exactly what it is. It's an explosion of air. So now you guys know everything there is to know about lightning and thunder. And I always try to teach during the morning newscast. And if you want to catch me on Fox 40, Monday through Friday, Pedro's here too, 4.30 to 10 a.m. Love to have you with us. Next week, we'll cover a different topic. I hope you join us.